Now, uh, w w once you got over there on the broadcast, it froze. All right, good evening and welcome to Titusville, where tonight we kick off, uh, well, really, we'll kick it off and then pause coverage for about a month or so of Space Coast Tar Heels football. I'm Alan Slaughterzinski, and it looks like we got the camera back here. We do. The second camera, that is. So we are underway. Ball is kicked off, and the Tar Heels pick it up and field it at the five. Comes it out to the 15, all the way out to about the 20-yard line. Now, again, remember, no elevated positions here, so we'll be shooting from the field side here tonight. So, how's the stream look? Does it? Okay. K keep your eye, because I'm looking at them like wobbling. See what I mean? Just underway here, 14.54 to go, 15-minute quarters, pretty much NFL rules as the Tar Heels. And they're taking on a team called Argyle tonight and want to start the broadcast here. We'll get to it after this play here. Snap to the quarterback. He's going to. Turns and actually went right to the uh, need the roster. Tar Heels looking at second and seven after a gain of three. Trying to figure out who the quarterback is here. Looks like number 15. It's not Smith. Looks to throw across the middle, complete, and that is enough for a Space Coast Tar Heel first down. Quarterback comes and gets the play from head coach David, I'm sorry, uh, Steve Rodriguez. We're going to talk about coach David Dye coming up, the legendary coach who passed away recently. And Coach Dye is on everybody's mind here tonight for sure. Such a big part of this program. Quarterback drops straight back, looks, 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 fires. That ball is caught. Now you're going to see, well, it should have been caught. There were two Tar Heels in the area there, but I like the way they've come out here so far. That ball hauled in by number six, and I have a roster that is uh, Garnett on the catch. Garnett. Has another Tar Heel first down, and here come Space Coast Tar Heels right down the field. Looking good here on this opening drive. And this is not eight-man football, by the way. Quarterback high snap, keeps it himself. He's just going to slide down wisely before he loses the ball or any more space. Thomas is the quarterback, it looks like, number 15. I only have last names. I apologize. If it's 60. Hey, Cliff, who's the quarterback? Is it? Coming up, we're going to talk to Coach Cliff Nichols. <laughs> Two backs, or one back in the backfield. Four wide receivers set for the Tar Heels. Quarterback looks, 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 looks. To steal an expression from Caleb. That ball was tipped. 
and incomplete. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, buddy. I hear you. Or I see it. I see it. You could, good thing you didn't say that. Got it on sale. Was it on Target at sale? On sale at Target? <laughs> My man. Ricky Bobby. 11.53 to play the, in the first quarter. Third and about 16 now. Roman's race. If you ain't first, you're last. That's right. Toy drive game here tonight. Tice feel good crowd on hand. Normally, I cheer for teams that wear purple jerseys, but not tonight. From the gun now to be a five wide receiver set. Three to the near side. Quarterback rolls left, throws across the middle, wide open, sliding catch. That's a Butte Clark, and that'll be a first down for Space Coast. I believe that's Roger Walker. Roger Walker with the Space Coast Tar Heels this year. They got a lot of players that have come over and, and are playing this year that played with the Orlando Phantoms last year. The Phantoms are now, of course, no more as uh, the owner and operator has left um, and created uh, the new league. The Elite American Football League, yep. Michael Torres. Oops, sorry. This is a pass in the flat to Walker. Walker hurdles. Oh, my. Roger Walker with a butte there of a hurdle. You tell me you got that. All right. Yep. And the Tar Heels now. Second and four. Ball's at about the 31. And here comes number 15, the quarterback back in. I'll get his name before too long. The only problem is I'm going to have to let you hear Caleb talk. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. Everybody loves Caleb. Yeah, they do. Turns, gives on a delayed handoff. Walker eating. Oh, and he's still on his feet. But Roger will eventually go down. Of course, Roger, the former Titusville or uh, Bayside. Bayside Bear product. And uh, did some winning at Bayside there under Coach Derek Smith. Next time he comes off the field for the play, switch to this. All right, so it'll be third and 10 at the 31. I would imagine this could be four down territory. Walker to the left of the quarterback, four wide receiver set. Steve Rodriguez calling the plays. Quarterback wants it, has it, looks, hits the Walker out of the backfield. Walker will be knocked down. It'll be fourth and about four now. They're doing some hitting out there. That is for sure. There's a look at head coach Steve Rodriguez here tonight as the quarterback walks over to get the play. And he goes back out, and we are ready here with fourth and six. Let's see what the Tar Heels have in their arsenal for fourth and six. Walker the lone back in the backfield, as it has been this entire Space Coast drive. Quarterback, two-step, three-step, down the sidelines, right here coming at you. Looked a little early to me, and that'll be a turnover on downs. Pull up David Dye. There he is, the man, the myth. Former defensive coordinator here and spent, the, I believe his last job here was the head coach of the Space Coast Tar Heels. And may he rest in peace. And 
you know, this program loves him, misses him. We love him and miss him. Used to love talking to Coach Die and uh, – this season, of course, in Coach Die's honor. The coaches are all wearing a shirt tonight with their names on the back and Coach Die on the front. So, Coach Die, you are sorely missed. Yeah, Coach Die, he knew, he knew the game. A little stubborn at times. <laughs> I used to try to get him to blitz a little more. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He blitzed all the time. 8.26 to go. First quarter, Argyle takes over with their first possession of the game. Straight up the gut. And there's plenty of room there for the running back. He's going to pick up 14, 15 yards. And that'll be a Argyle first down. Good run. Big time run up the middle. If that, if that keeps up choppy like that, we'll go to a straight Facebook Live because I couldn't stand watching it. Law playing quarterback. Okay, Law playing quarterback. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, thank you. You know his first name? And this time, that football came out. I thought that was the football. But they say he was down. It'll be second down and 10 now after no game. Roger sent me a roster, but there are no first names on it. I love my man, Roger Lewis, the owner. First time I've ever been out here where Roger's not been dressed in pads for a game, so I guess Roger's made it official this year. But God forbid if there's an injury up front, Roger will be back in pads in the New York. Maybe we can get Cliff Nichols back out there. <laughs> Former Orlando Predator, Space Coast, played here on the Space Coast, and now the head coach for the Space Coast Vipers. Coach, come on over. Give me a minute while we get started here. I'm here with uh, Coach Cliff Nichols. And, Coach, um, here you are. Can't stay away, can you? I cannot get enough football. Man, if it's out there, I'm watching it. But you, above anybody, knows what these guys do. Like, it was interesting. I was walking over, and a guy was getting out of his car, and he was running up because he had just gotten off of work an hour and a half ago. And, I mean, what these guys do and how they do it, it's really something special, isn't it? I mean, semi-pro football I played up until last year, and uh, it's a completely different breed of football, man. You get a lot of guys that just love the game, man. You're doing something that's really not very smart right. to do just to play some more football, man. you got to respect these guys. No doubt. Coach, and, and for you, you just completed your first year as the head coach of the Space Coast Vipers, and – you know, I, look, uh, you, you did exactly what you said you wanted to do this year, uh, re-energize the program. You, of course, you got the win in the big battle for US-1 there. And the Hudson, was what was that? What, what, what did you win? Battle of US-1. Battle of US-1. I don't know where that. Hudson's astronaut in Titusville, so I apologize for that. But you get the Battle of US-1 victory. Um, what, what did you like about what you were able to accomplish this year uh, as head coach of the Vipers? I see a lot of buy-in, especially with some of the younger kids. I mean, we got some really quality young kids coming up, and you can kind of see that, that revitalization of the team. You know, our numbers have gone up. You know, you got the buy-in that's there. It's, I mean, I know we didn't get it done in the win-loss column, but I feel like we took a turn in the right direction towards bringing that program program back to some success. Yeah, it was exciting football. Um, it was, you know, fun to watch. And, oh, wide snap goes way over the punter's head. And Space Coast going to get the ball first and ten at the best private investigation, inside the best private investigation red zone. And, and Coach, what are you – what's the next step in the blueprint, the process for this program? Uh, I just think it's a matter of getting the guys – out to this program, man. Roger's doing a great job, you know, 
I mean but yours. Oh, my, you said yeah. this program. Uh, I, yeah, I, I mean yeah. yours. <laughs> uh, my program, I, I think it's just that continue to get guys to buy in and recruit our school. Man, we've got kids at the school that can play ball, but the the program just hasn't been it hasn't been fun. Yeah. You know, and I think we're getting we're making it fun, we're making it competitive, you know, and we're getting the excitement back in space in Space Coast football, and I think that's just a matter of getting getting it revitalized. Coach uh, Coach Rod or owner Roger Lewis, uh, the, the Tar Heels will be playing up there for their season this year. He told me before the game, so we're excited about that. Um, Coach, you got two Brevard County teams headed to the state championship next week. We had four teams uh, advance as far as the regional finals this year. Uh, what, what, you know, as a guy that played Brevard County High School football, as a guy that is a Brevardian through and through, uh, got to be proud for the overall success of this county. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, it's great to see. Brevard, Brevard, Brevard is full of football talent, man. And to see two teams, you know, you got Coco, who's always there. But to see a team like Merritt Island, you know, to come along out of nowhere, have a great season, and making it to the state championship game is incredible. I wish we could have got a couple more, but I mean, just seeing those teams do as well as they did, we got the talent here to compete with, you know, your Miami teams and all that stuff. It's great to see. I'll end this this on this note, and what would be even better to see is to see those that need to step up to pay our coaches to keep our coaches. Coach, appreciate you, man. Always great talking with you. Yes, sir. Coach Cliff Nichols of the Space Coast Vipers. And let's see, Law, Quentin Law, Quentin Law. Quarterback. Number 15. All right, I'll get to learn the guys' numbers and all that. So, we'll, if you know, if you give me a player's number, it'll help me remember it because uh, this roster is not doing me much good. You got two wide receivers here split near side right into your living room. And we got flat, a whistle and a timeout by Argyle. Or, yep, Argyle because that official came flying in off the far sideline, so that's generally that indication. Three forty-nine to play in a fast-moving first quarter here. The annual toy drive game here at Titusville Youth Football and Cheer Facilities. I can never remember the name of this complex. I thought it would, yeah. We we're just talking about you. We we're just talking about you. Okay. Yeah, next week. Yep. Yeah, it's state championships are Thursday and Friday. Call me. Oh, I've been watching. Michael Torres of the Elite American Football League. Three. Third down and ten. For the space code. They show blitz. Argyle does bring it. He gets rid of it. Walker. And the flat walker down the sidelines. And that, oh, yeah, that's 15 more. And completely and utterly unnecessary. But Roger Walker, a disciplined player, he knows not to retaliate. He doesn't. That's a first and goal to go situation coming up for the Space Coast Tar Heels. Great call by the referee. We got an outstanding group of referees here tonight. Yes, he's standing right here. <laughs> <laughs> if you need to move that, let me know. All right, we're good. Yep, he's good. Yep. All right, so first, it'll be first and goal to go at the five-yard line. 
as they get set from the position here. From the position. I got to get in the groove here tonight, man. It's been a long week. From the gun, two backs in the backfield. Turns, gives the Walker balls out. Roger dropped it, and I believe the Argyles got it, and they're going to run back for a pick six. Unbelievable turn of events. A pick six for Argyle following the fumble with 3.20 to play. In the opening quarter, Argyle takes a 6 nothing lead. Wild turn of events that was. Rare you see Roger do that. Gibson U Sports Complex. Thanks, Rick. Yeah, we were over in Orlando all week. Pop Warner Super Bowls. And, man, I'll tell you, going up and down at Camping World Stadium and across from Jones High School, it just wear you out. Big play there. So, we'll see how they responded. I think... If we're telling the truth here, one of the biggest things people want to know about this football team, and we're about to find out, is with a lot of new faces, is overcoming adversity. Caleb, and that was one thing they couldn't do last year. They couldn't overcome adversity. And a lot of times, on a lot of occasions, it led to some disagreements between each other. And so we'll see. Nothing to hang your head about. I mean, it's 316 to go in this game, and they just came down the football field after, you know, following the turnover. Roger Walker looks good coming out of that backfield. They look good throwing the football. So, you know, you can't – you, you got to be able to attack adversity. And we'll see what happens here. But, yeah, once he picked that ball up, I don't think anybody was catching him. I think, as a matter of fact, he's still running. I said pick six. It was a fumble. We Scoop and score, right. I said pick six. That's because the other day we had four on one drive. We had four pick sixes on one drive the other day, and only one of them counted. They go for two, and they'll be stopped, it looks like. No good. Use Coach Die as Caleb adjusts the scoreboard here. So with 3.16 to play, it's a 6 nothing lead for Argyle. So the scoop and score... It's one of those days. Great night for football tonight. Nice and warm and muggy out. And which just means if you come to this Gibson Youth football fields, right, it just means the mosquitoes are out. Did you use it? No. All right, that's all right. During setup, I was reminded because. Right, yeah, no, I bet. That's why I'm in a pair of sweatpants and a sweat, you know, hoodie. So it's six nothing following the scoop and score. Three sixteen to play here in the opening quarter, the annual toy drive game here. Where'd you see eight man football? No, dude. No, I know you heard the announcement, but that's I believe that's an indoor thing they do. It has nothing to do with this outdoor. You got me putting eight-man football in the post. That's a line drive kick, so there'll be plenty of room to return. He's got a seam. He's got a seam. He actually cut inside. Had he taken that seam, he might still be running by us here. Good return, though. Good return. So, to be first and 10 for Space Coast.
Whistles. We got another timeout, it looks like. Yep, Argyle's going to take another timeout. So that's two timeouts they've already burned here in the first quarter. And I do apologize for that in the description. Nearly great coverage. I mean, that was just textbook right there. Great coverage, great play, lots of speed on that one. Ball was there, DB. That's just a good play by everybody there. DB had to make the play on it. If he didn't, it's six. All right, let's see what happens here. 258, second and 10. They mark these fields off in 10 yard increments. So we got whistles, flags. Let's see what the call is. Ball looks like it's at about the midfield stripe. And that's gonna go against the Tar Heels. They're backing up here. So it'll be second and 15. Uh, no, Lucky. He's not thrown a pick. That's a pretty good ball, though, there he just threw. Come on, Lucky. Now don't jinx him. Four wide receivers set. Turns, gives it back in the backfield. And he's got – and that's going to be – that's either going to be, I think he grabbed him by his neck area, so it could be a horse collar. He may have actually accidentally touched the face mask. If he does, we'll see what the official calls here. And it's going to be a face mask, but will it be the 5 or the 15 variety? Let's see if he signals personal foul. I didn't see the head go down. It's going to be a personal foul, so that's going to be 15 yards, and it should be enough for... A Space Coast Tar Heel first down. I'm going to turn you over to Caleb here. I'll be right back. All right, and a timeout called. Again, to reemphasize, it is personal foul, 15-yard penalty. All right, that was a quick break. Want to go over, say hello to Michael Torres here, and that's 249 here, so I'm not sure. What's the whole – oh, we got an injured player down. Yeah, we don't – try not to show injured players. I'm in my uh, – my – what do you call it? My mosquito gear. I see them, man. Are you getting bit?
we got all kind of stuff coming up, don't we? Next week, I mean, we've got the state championships next week. We've got uh, some basketball on tap. We've got state championship preview show. Tomorrow, we're going to announce the girls volleyball player of the year and give out a plaque for that. It's going to be a crazy, crazy week here on Brevard Sports Network, and we're going to be in Fort Lauderdale Thursday and Friday. We're actually going to do an audio broadcast of the Coco game and nothing on the Merritt Island game but just coverage, updates, things of that nature. The reason being is because Merritt Island has a radio station, WJRD, and that's going to be a flag and an offsides. Or is he going to call a, I think he might call that on the center. And that'll back up the Tar Heels five yards. I think he did call it on the center. Bad snap, quarterback corrals it in, and he'll be stopped. He will not get back to the original line of scrimmage. 2.35 to go. You know what, we're going to go to a straight Facebook Live after this quarter. All y'all watching, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump up out of this app. The only, the only thing I don't like about a straight, I just don't like the way it's choppy looking, and that's not the kind of broadcast I want to bring you guys. I want you guys to be able to see it and, Unless you guys don't have a problem with it, let me know. Second and 11, picked up four on it. One wide receiver near side. Roger Walker down the sidelines, Walker. Skirt, skirts out of bounds, forced out of bounds after a gain of 10. He only needed nine, so that'll be a Tar Heel first down, and the clock will stop. We good? Okay, we good. Fine? Okay, thank you. All right, we're good. Everybody says we're okay. Billy Palmer's watching, so, you know. I'd like to thank Billy for his contribution to the Brevard Sports Network this year. Billy in. Of course, Coach Blue, Rob Query, who you won't hear from Rob for the next three weeks now because Michigan's in the college football playoff. So Rob is probably disappointed. If Rob could take three weeks off of school here, I wouldn't doubt that he would. And he doesn't want to say anything to Jinx. Hey, yeah, he doesn't want to say anything. Yeah, right, it's funny. But what Billy and Rob and Caleb, you did this year on our, on our other, on our uh, broadcast has been incredible as Roger Walker straight up the gut here. Actually, that's not Walker. That's number six. Walker's zero. But what those guys, what you guys were able to do this year in securing and providing a second broadcast for high school football and a quality broadcast at that, not just a camera with somebody talking. You know, what you guys did was was really big for us and uh, Billy I certainly appreciate you and Coach Blue and Caleb under 30 seconds to play first quarter straight up the gut that is a Space Coast Tar Heel first down and will take us to the end of the first quarter so why don't we do this why don't we take the hike down the field here as they get set to start the second quarter they're not going to come back uh, why don't you go ahead and put Coach Dye's picture up there so that people don't have to experience us walking down the field and and uh, jiggling the camera up and down and making everybody car sick. And But we are going to go to the second quarter with the Tar Heels trailing Argyle 6 nothing.
All right, welcome back here and again. All of you out there, we're all grieving with you and missing Coach David Dye here in the Toy Drive game. And in honor of Coach Dye, it'll be first. De oh, no, they, they marked him short. So that's a deaf perception of my old age. Can't see. So it's third and two. But this is definitely four down territory. One of the, and look, the Space Coast has had some decent kickers, but one of their strong points has certainly never been kicking. At least in the three years we've been covering the program. And they got some guys that can put the foot on the ball, but in terms of putting them through the uprights, now that's been a different story. You can put the foot on the ball, but they can put the foot on the ball accurately. accurately yeah. He's trying to be polite. First in, or third and two now. We got an injured player out there. I don't like to see that. He got set at the line of scrimmage and then got lightheaded. So he had at least he had the sense of mind to get up and walk off the line of scrimmage. I thought maybe this was going to be one of them crazy trick plays you see on like TikTok or something. And you know, this is a obviously a exhibition game and it can you know these guys work full-time jobs so the conditioning may not be where it really needs to be in terms of where it would normally be three four games into a season so you know he is up and off on his own power so that's good news Kind of doing the whole one eye winking thing there. So maybe he just took a tough knock and he'll go into concussion protocol <laughs> for semi pro football. What is concussion protocol for semi pro football? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. You good? I'm good. You good? Drink some water while I'm here. There's some water, right. Just so I can say you drunk some water. Hold that, hold that. Quarterback under center, two backs in the backfield. Gives it to the running back who finds room up the middle. Just gets a first down. First down, Tar Heels. So as Space Coast Tar Heels are here inside the best private investigations red zone. Two receivers out wide, one near side, one far side. Looks like a pro set. Two backs in the backfield. Quarterback under center. Goes and hands it off to the second back through. Who might have gained a yard, might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. They'll say he lost a yard on the play. But there's a flag on the play. We'll see what the, the white hat calls. Encroachment on the defense, so it, instead of a one-yard loss, we'll take five free yards, and it will remain first down. So first and five here in the best private investigations red zone. Uh, quarterback's name is Johnny Wayne Scott from Satellite High School. That's where he went to school, I'm told. So I got that figure. It was killing me, man, killing me. So Johnny Wayne Scott's the quarterback, and it is second and five here right in your living room. Ball's at the 15, I think. Actually, it says first and five. It's first and five following the penalty. Two backs in the backfield. Johnny under center, which is what everybody calls him. Turns, play action, rolls right, coming at you, throws. And that'll go out of bounds. Number 81, the intended wide receiver. Uh, 
I just saw Wayne Wright whisper in the ear of uh, Stewart here, the wide receiver, number 13. Keep your eye on him. He's going to try. He, what I'd do here, if I was him, I'd, try, I'd fake that corner route and run right to the post. Little, little post slant here. Second and five. This time it's up the gut. Roger Walker, what do I know? Walker cuts back. Roger Walker in for a Tar Heel. Touchdown! And with 10.33 to play in the opening half, it's 6-6. Six, six. Nice run. <laughs> there is an advantage to standing on the sidelines. He's got a Tusculum helmet on. Pioneer helmet. They're going to go for two here. That's so unusual because all week we've been saying run for one, kick for two, right? They ought to make it that way in, in semi or, uh, you know, minor league football. If you can kick a field goal, it's two points. I formation. Wainwright turns, gives to the deep back, and, yep, that's going to end in a hurry. And so with 10, 13, 33 to play in the first half, it is 6-6. Six, six. All right. Coming back and uh, got a report for VAR Sports Network. Sends out, sends out its uh, thoughts and prayers out to Rick Rivers, who uh, we told is uh, back home uh, after a pretty severe car accident he was involved in uh, the other night. Uh, Roger Rogers reported to me that uh, that Rick Rivers is home and and he's you know he's going to make a recovery. Yep. So uh, it's, al it's always good to hear. Tar Heel set to kick off. And wow, what a boot. It'll be dropped by Argyle. And they will take over first and 10 near the 24 or 23 yard line. So Argyle with 13.27 left to go here in the first half. I'd like to thank Best Private Investigations for their sp partnership with the Brevard Sports Network we appreciate all of our sponsors. Like OMG Hibachi Grill. Now you might say, why do they call it OMG Hibachi Grill? Because when you go to that food truck and get that food, it will leave you saying nothing but, oh my goodness. Quarterback making his checks at the line in the gun. Two receivers near side. Too far side, running back side, car right. Takes a snap, hands it off to the receiver who's looking for room, and he will be swallowed up there by big number seven, who said, na, 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 na. The Matumbo finger wave.
The uh, loss of one on the play. Second and 11. Oh no, they're going to he gained they're going to give him a yard on forward progression. So it's second and 9. Score 6-6 six, six, as you see on the OMG Hibachi Grill scoreboard at the top of your screen. Quarterback in the gun run wreck sidecar left. They're going to try and go the same play again and he finds room. He breaks breaks one tackle, two tackles. Dragging about four or five defenders, still moving the pile. And he will be brought down, or I say shoved out of bounds, relatively close to midfield. Wow. He was quick, made his move, and said, uh, it's going to take more than one of you guys to bring me down. I'm going to put the graphic up so we don't I don't make someone car sick, but I'm going to move a little closer to the action. So it's first and 10, ball around midfield. Quarterback out of the gun, running back side car right. Two by two set. Check that a two by one set with a tight end. High snap. And the back will pick up a couple of yards. Make it second down. Second down and about three. You can see 11-28. If you can read the scoreboard that far off in the distance, 6-6. Six six. With just over 11 minutes left to go here in the first half of this charity toy drive. And a timeout called. Timeout. Space Coast Tar Heels and head coach Stephen Rodriguez is going to give his team a piece of his mind. Telling the boys, uh, say telling telling his men, we got to keep our emotions under control here. We've already had one emotion related penalty. You know, and, and this was one of the big tests we said we wanted to see out of the Tar Heels. We wanted to see if, you know, you have a lot more personalities joining the team. And you want to see if you can get these personalities gelling and sh showing good progress before the actual start of the season. You know, this is a an exhibition game. Toy, toy charity, a t charity toy drive. Coming back from the timeout with 11.07 left to go in the first half. Quarterback lines up in the gun, running back side, car left. And... I think they got the Tar Heels to jump off sides, but I don't know if the offensive line moved first. Call off sides on the Tar Heels. That'll be a five-yard penalty. And with those five yards, that'll, that'll give Argyle a enough yards for a first down. So it's first and ten. Back, find some room over that left side. 
pick up a gain of about 11 on the play, and that'll be enough for an Argyle first down. So they're inching ever so close to the OMG Hibachi Grill Red Zone. Running back gets chopped down at about the line of scrimmage. May have gained a yard or two. And there's more laundry on the field. Wait to see what the referee's call is here. Looks like it's going to be against Argyle. So that'll move him back. Nope. Referees all come over here to have a discussion. I promise I'm not crazy. I, I, I saw a yellow yellow thing fly into the air. Personal foul on the Tar Heels. So that'll be 15 more free yards. And so that will move them into, oh wow, with a 15 yard penalty, that moves it inside the five yard line. So we will see it here first and 10, first and goal from about the five yard line. Quarterback in the gun and gets, I believe he gets the Tar Heels to jump up. Nope. It'll be a penalty on Argyle. The Argyle Avengers. That'll be a five yard penalty. Quarterback fakes the give. He'll take it himself and into the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Avengers. And I think we'll be seeing some more laundry on the field for some extracurricular activity. Touchdown is good after the play. Personal foul on the Tar Heels. Which will most likely be enforced on the kickoff. Quarterback in the gun. Running back side car right. Nope. He's under center. That's offsides on the tar heels. So they'll move the ball up another inch. Twelve to six pending this two point conversion. Avengers on top of the Tar Heels. The Avengers line up in an I formation. Gives it to the first back through. 
And looks like he will be stopped short. Nope. They say he got in. So with 9.44 left to go here in the first half, your score, the Argyle Avengers 14, Space Coast Tar Heels 6. All right, so the Avengers set to kick it off. Let us know who you're cheering for, where you're watching from. And that kick is deep. See who comes up with it. Believe it's still Space Coast Tar Heels ball. Our heels take over first and ten. Just shy of midfield. Quarterback drops back to Pat. Nope. Hands it off. Running back finds room for a few yards off the left side. Pick up officially a gain of three yards, and that's second and seven. As we approach nine minutes left here in the first half. With your score right there up on the OMG Hibachi Grill scoreboard. Argyle 14, Space Coast 6. Quarterback under center in that pro style set. He's going to chuck it right near living rooms. Incomplete, and that ball came right into the living room. Hope you, hope you all didn't have your 3D glasses on. Number 10, the intended receiver. So that'll bring up third and seven for the Tar Heels. Yeah. 
They're liking the matchup here, number 13 on this cornerback. Going to hand off to the back in the back. Cuts up field and wow is met by the middle linebacker. Boy, he cut into that hole, and as soon as he stepped in that hole, that linebacker came right over the top and uh, laid the boom on him. But on that run, it is now fourth down, fourth and five, we'll call it, for the Tar Heels. Can they get this conversion? Just just under eight minutes left to go here in the first half. Got it. And... Uh, Tar Heels sent out the punting unit, and it is shanked. Going out of, nope. Staying in bounds and being downed at just outside the 30-yard line. No. The, 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 this hand of protection was provided over the <laughs> The hawk flies over the field. No, 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 I'm, 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 I'm following the players that are right here. They'll mark it dead on the 30. Got it. So here come the Avengers. The Argyle Avengers and the Space Coast Tar Heels playing for, for your pleasure and this charity toy drive. We got a lot of toys tonight. We're going to be here till 11. I'm sure the toys that were brought will bless, bless the children that receive it, receive them. Quarterback in the gun, running back side, car right. Running back comes, coming near side, cuts up field, and he's got a little seam, picks up a nice gain. But I, th there is laundry in the field, and it looks to be in the realm of holding. White hat calls holding on Argyle. And it's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. As Alan and I have said, And off up the middle, and he might have gotten back to line of scrimmage. Most likely lost a, lost a yard on the play. Three bucks what? Hey, we greatly appreciate the donation. Absolutely. Quarterback out of the gun. Drops back, surveying. He's going to tuck it and might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. 
So he shall be sacked for a loss of three yards, and that'll bring up third and about 15 or 16. Argyle with a third and 15 here. Five and a half minutes left to go here in the first half. Running back side, car right. And he will plow, plow forward for a gain of about two yards on the play. So this is a big fourth down, and they're going to spring out the punting unit. Yep. Yes. Snap. What a punt. And we'll be downed about the 40 yard, the Space Coast 40 yard line. So we'll get to see this offense come out and try to put some, try to get some points here on the board before halftime. 3.52 left to go here in the first half. All right, so folks, coming up at halftime, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this stream off, and I'm going to jump on another stream for the second half. It will be Countdown Caleb Brown, myself, bringing you the rest of the action. So don't worry. We're only going to disappear for a few quick minutes once we switch streams, and then you'll jump. Uh, Alan is feeling really under the weather. He tried to start the brog. Feeling a little under the weather. Quarterback rolls out. Fires a wobbly pass out of bounds. And the Argyle coach has a nice reception. So it'll be second and 10 for the Tar Heels with 3.45 left to go here in the first half on the 40-yard line. Drops back, surveys over the middle, and it's intercepted by Argyle. Check that, he dropped the interception. Third and 10. I thought he had that interception clear as day.
Johnny out of the gun. Four wide receivers. Tries to fire to this near sideline. Incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. It's now fourth and ten with 3.33 left to go in the half. So what do the Tar Heels do today? No. So the Tar Heels are going to punt this football away with 3.33 left to go here in the first half. High snap. And it was a high punt, unfortunately, on the short end. And wow, that was not a good idea. It. And the extracurricular activity. And and this is what this is what you don't like to see here for semi pro football because Yes, and and uh, as as Alan has just stated, if the referees really want to control the game, if you throw if you threw punches, you got to go. You you want to gain respectability back to the to to minor league football, you got to make sure people in 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 that sense, then you have to enforce it. You throw punches, you're done. You're done for the game. So it looks like fumble was recovered by Argyle, running back heading up the middle, and will get swallowed up by that Tar Heel defense. And there was no flags thrown on that on that previous play. All right. Two fifty-seven and counting left to go here in the first half. Again, so what's going to happen here, folks, is at halftime, I'm going to jump feeds. We'll be right live, right back here on the Brevard Sports Network. We're just uh, switching feeds. So look for part two in the broadcast coming up just after halftime, and it will be a straight Facebook live. Quarterback sends a man in motion. And they'll pick up a delay game penalty. Going to try the same play here, giving, giving it on the jet sweep motion. And the Tar Heels said, uh, not today, folks, not today. If you thought the intensity might have been a little, you know, thought it was going to turn back, it, it this intensity is going to stay up all game long. 2.10 left here in the first half.
And I believe a timeout's being taken. No, this is not uh, 14U. This is semi-pro football right here on the Brevard Sports Network. Not sure. We, uh, we were not given rosters. So if anyone knows the name of the Avengers quarterback, we will gladly... Quarterback in the gun, running back off to his left. Takes a snap. He's going to tuck it under himself, and he will be brought down. And that will be fourth down. Might have picked up a yard or two on the play. So it is officially fourth and 13. And so with this big fourth down, they're going to, Avengers are going to punt the football with 127 left to go here in the first half. Another big, booming punt. And a great recovery downing that football by the Argyle Avengers. So with 54 seconds left to go here in the half. Tar Heels got to drive the length of the football field. Oh, you know, this is another aspect of the game that uh, people are wondering: can the can the Tar Heels adapt here? Coach Steven Rodriguez calling the plays. Fifty-four seconds. Timeout called by the Tar Heels. Coach wants to have a chat with, with his team before they start this. What they're hoping to be a long, successful drive ending in points. Fourteen to six there on the OMG Hibachi scoreboard. Argyle Avengers with the lead. One of their touchdowns coming off of a scoop and score. In which they forced a Tar Heel Tar Heel running back fumble inside the ten yard line and then scored on a 85 plus yard touchdown. So the Tar Heels come out lined up, ready to go.
Quarterback takes a snap. Serving the field. Fires to the sideline. Shallow completion. And that'll be that'll pick up a gain of about six yards on the play. Second down, but that's not really much to matter. Clock is running 30 seconds left here in the half. Hurry back to the line. There's a pass, pass tip caught to himself. Slung out of bounds, and there is a lot of laundry on the field. I believe that's going to get called for a face mask. He was definitely tackled, and that head got whipped right around. So that'll tack on an extra 15 yards after the play itself picked up about 10 or 15 yards. This could end up being a 30-yard 30, 30 play. 18 seconds left in the half. So it ends up being a big gain of about 30 yards on the play, 15 yards on the pass completion and catch. And then the 15-yard penalty. I'm going to go ahead and get out of their way. And Tar Heels again in the gun. Fires it right here near your living rooms. Pass will be incomplete. I apologize. Was trying to move out of the way in the. Appreciate it. The defender letting me know that uh, he wasn't planning on running me over. Again, the Tar Heels seem to like this matchup here. Tar Heels seem to like this matchup, 13 versus number 6. So keep an eye on that matchup. Ball might come back again near side. Six seconds left. This should be the final play, barring a defensive penalty. And the quarterback will take a sack, fumble on the play. And that will be the final play of the first half with your score. Space Coast Tar Heel, or the Argyle Avengers 14, Space Coast Tar Heel 6. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to switch feeds. I'm going to end this feed and look for part two coming up in just a few minutes. You are watching Space Coast Tar Heel football right here on the Brevard Sports Network.